We want to understand what are the things we can represent with strings of bits. If they're going to be in a computer, they're going to be finite. They can be any length. When we say finite, that doesn't mean the length is bounded, but it does mean it always eventually gets to the end. It can't go on forever, but there's no limit to the length it can be. Can we represent the natural numbers using finite binary strings? So the natural numbers certainly go on forever. Do the finite binary strings go on forever? There's a finite binary string of any length. There's no limit on the length of a finite binary string. Right? Just like every, every natural number is finite, even though there are infinitely many of them. Any specific one is finite. Before we try to answer this, maybe we need to define the binary strings. There is a definition in the book. Binary strings of all lengths. These are all the finite strings. So he provides three different notations that mean the same thing, tended to define binary strings. They're all kind of complicated. This is picking any natural number, and it's a sequence of either zeros or ones of that length. So now do we have a, an easy answer to, can we represent all natural numbers with binary strings? Right, this is all the natural numbers. So there is a binary string zero when n is zero, just one sequence. There's a binary string zero, zero when n is two. There's a binary string zero, 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 zero. We don't even need ones, right? Ones are just a waste. We can represent all the natural numbers with just strings of zeros, of length, whatever the natural number is. Ones are useful for making those notations more com compact, but not necessary at all to represent them all. So that, I, I hope, gives you an intuition that we can do this. It's not a proof, because it's using dot, dot, dots. So let's see if we can do a proof. And we're going to do a proof using induction. I want you to think about this for a second, and we'll do a Slack poll. It's a little bit of a trick question, but mostly hope to get you thinking about what the proof is going to be like. One is very unpopular. Why is one so unpopular and zero is popular? Are those choices numbers or something else, which you can't really tell from the Slack notation? Those are strings. Our goal is to define binary strings. So zero means the string containing just the bit zero. One means the string containing just the bit one. And empty means the string with no bits. One is unnecessarily unpopular. Both one and zero are equally not the ideal base case. You could start from both of them if you don't want to include the empty string. But if you look at, this gets back to the question, is the empty sequence a binary string in the book's definition? Yeah, it is, because n is the natural numbers, which includes 0. And the sequence from, in this case, 0 minus 1, that's an empty sequence. The sequence from 0 to, this is a, a little bit wacky as well, to have the end of the sequence be before the beginning. But that suggests it's an empty sequence. So we want to start from the empty string. And there are lots of different ways we could write it. It's hard to see empty strings, because they don't look like anything. We can write this as lambda or epsilon. They're different symbols people like to use. But it's an empty string. It's a string with no bits in it. So that's our base case. What's our inductive case? So we, we do want to produce all the binary strings here, not just the ones. Like it looked like just zeros was enough to represent the natural numbers, which is kind of unsurprising. So we can add a zero in front or behind, but we also want to produce strings with ones, yeah. You have two options where you have Right. We can put either a zero or a one. We can add either, either a one or a zero. Right. We could put it at the beginning, we could put it at the end. Either way is going to produce our set of binary strings. Okay. Kind of tree structure? Like we start out with, I, I guess we start out with nothing, and then that splits off into... Zero, nothing, one, nothing. And that's the so we start with empty string. By the rule, now both zero and one are. By rule two, now for both of those, we can add a zero in front. So now from this one, we get zero, zero, and one, zero. 
And from this one, we get 0, 1, and 1, 1. We can apply the rule again. For this one, we're going to add a 0 in front of it and a 1 in front of it. And we can do that for all these. So, so yeah, it will look like a binary tree. Every time you apply the rule to the previous generation, you're going to get twice as many strings. So this is going to produce all binary strings of finite length. Can we represent all the natural numbers? Yeah. So we should intuitively see that we can, that we already saw we could do it with just zeros. So we could prove, if we needed to prove this to someone who was more skeptical, could you do it? Maybe, we'll see, maybe that we can put that on the homework. 